My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The Wooden Boat Experience. Wow, episode 20 already. Before I get too far along in this restoration, I'd like to share my philosophy on it. My goal here is to create what I think should be called a resto mod. I'm not trying to create a boat just like it was when new, or even better than new. There are lots of boats like that around, and they are great, but not what I want. I want a user boat, what my friend Andrew calls fine from far, but far from fine. The kind of boat that if your grandchild gets in, but she isn't wearing the right shoes, you don't want to yell. I want a boat that's safe, dependable, and has been modified to work for me and my needs. Keeping in mind that this project is being done on a budget, and with a short timeline, would it be as interesting without such restrictions? Hopefully, it will be something I can be proud to own, and will help me share the love of wooden boats with others. Please check out my Patreon page to help support the wooden boat experience. And now, you can order Wooden Boat Experience merchandise directly from our website at glassgoat.com. Let's see what got accomplished this week. I knew we needed some tunes in here, and thanks to my brother Dave, now we have them. And also, a way to keep them dry. And things have to come apart before they go back together. <laughs> Lots of screws to pull out, not to mention finding the ones that are hiding. I've really got to get my hands on an old read and print screwdriver or two. After 64 years, that Chris Craft sealer is still pretty tough stuff. So that was Saturday, and a great way to start the weekend. Here I'm trying to decide the condition of the frame or rib and where it needs to be cut off and a new one scarfed in. Next we need to remove the screws that go up through the strakes of the hull and into the frames. Picking out the filler to figure out where the screws are sometimes can be the hardest part. I'm cutting the frame or rib in approximately the location where I expect to put a scarf in, but it's not the right angle. The actual ratio is 8 to 1 for a scarf. The frame or rib is 3 quarters of an inch high, so the scarf cut should be 6 inches long. It's much easier to take these things out in pieces.
this screw goes up through the rib and into the stringer, so it has to be cut off. Sometimes you really don't have to be an expert to spot the rod. The remainder of the ribs or frames you see on the left going up the side are going to be removed later on because we're going to bring the brand new frames all the way from the gunnel on the port side all the way down through to the scarf on the other side. There was still a little time left in the afternoon, so I stripped the paint and varnish off of this rear deck mahogany support. I figured I could find a better use for this white oak than the seat back that it had been. I'm not sure how it happened, but the weekend seems to have disappeared. Monday started off with some new gloves, a new attitude, and stripping some white oak. This frame was going to be used as my template for the new frame, and it ended up in two pieces when I was deconstructing the transom. So I wanted to check one more time and see how it went together. This piece would not have been fun to make without a template. The jigsaw worked really well to cut out this frame, but only because I had a really good blade in it, because this white oak is hard. I'm pretty happy with the way it fits, just needs a couple of slight adjustments, mostly to make it look good. I began Tuesday by gathering the wood I needed for the vertical transom frames and prepping that wood. The vertical frames were originally mahogany. I chose to replace them with white oak. White oak is harder to work with, but is stronger, and that is what I had available. This white oak was reclaimed. Each board was ripped to width on the table saw. The original board was an uneven thickness, so I also ran them through the thickness planer. The screw holes were pre-drilled and countersunk. <laughs> Lastly, I broke the sharp edges with a hand plane so they would accept paint better. I do this even with the boards which are not being replaced. Paint and varnish tends to roll off a sharp edge. It keeps the wood from splintering as well. One last look before the new transom boards are installed. So it's Wednesday a couple days before the video comes out and you can see that the humidity has dropped to the lowest it's been since I built the boat shed. And also, if you can see, it's about 54 degrees in here right now, and outside it's 20 degrees, but it's been sunny all morning, and this is the best it's been in here. Now we have no heat source other than the sun, and um, as far as slick feet, I'll tell you guys about that later on. But what a great day. It feels so good to be have a little sunshine and to be warm. Let's get this marked. We need to get this keel leveled off here and uh, take the excess out and then we will epoxy on a new piece of wood to fill this gap so that when this comes across when the transom comes across we have this big gap here and we want to fill that with wood so need a nice surface to do that on Now we got a nice level line there. Now we will come in with a big chisel.
Well, that looks a little better, and it looks like a piece of wood will be able to fill that gap. You can see they're just, I don't know, maybe almost a quarter of an inch. A little bit less on this side where the plywood's a little warm. And this hole's got to be filled up too. But we'll fill all that with wood or with 5200 to keep water from setting it in there and uh, causing a problem. As you can see here, there is a plan for some of this. It isn't all made up on the fly. Time to figure out exactly where that scarf joint is going to land on the transom. A little more fitting up to do and of course the wedge at the bottom and I may trim this up a little bit higher here not sure about that yet I got to look at it so it's about five o'clock now it was noon earlier when we looked and now it is if you can see about 40 degrees in here humidity went up just a little bit so far this is just a dry fit nothing's been really tightened up there's still some things to do. I want to get this whole back deck area dry fitted and including the rear deck before I put anything together. So I want to make sure everything is nice and tight. Plus, I don't want to close up the transom till we put these frames in that we're replacing. It'll be a lot easier if I pull that whole transom area out of there other than the boards that are staying. These boards right here, I'm not going to take back off but I'll take all the frames and everything out of the way so we can steam bend those frames and put them in. And hopefully that's gonna happen next week. I am done for the day. Speckles and I are heading to do chores.